When it comes to outfitting explorers for the most extreme conditions, you really can't do much better than Gore-Tex. It is a borderline magical material used by almost every top tier outdoor brand out there. And then there is Fjall Raven. Fjall Raven has been outfitting people for the outdoors for a very long time, but to this day, they still stubbornly refuse to touch anything even close to Gore-Tex. And this is what they've been doing instead. Now we're not going to go too in-depth into the interesting and dark past of Gore-Tex because we've already made a whole video on that. So if you are interested in that, make sure that you check out that video. It will be linked down below. And for the sake of our first time viewers here, we're going to do a little crash course. Gore-Tex is a miracle of a substance with a dark underbelly. It is breathable, yet waterproof, lightweight, but tough, helps astronauts go to literally space, but is slowly killing life on Earth. We literally created a monster, a really impressive, endlessly useful, really problematic monster. Now there is definitely a lot more to know here, but basically Gore-Tex belongs to a family of chemicals called perfluorochemicals, or PFCs. One of the big problems with these chemicals that help your jacket last forever is that they last forever. All things on Earth are meant to break down. That's sort of how this whole planet Earth evolution thing works. So by creating this really toxic forever chemical, it just kind of throws everything out of whack. But the outdoor clothing industry loves this technology because of its amazing talents. Even though it has a bad habit of getting drunk at family gatherings and murdering the whole ecosystem. Take Patagonia, for example. They're undeniably one of the most, if not the most, environmentally conscious business in this scene. And yet, they talk about these questionable materials as a necessity in some situations. Now, we could debate the use of the term necessary and argue whether or not Levi's a Patagonia fanboy or not. The truth is, I am, and Gore-Tex is rarely truly needed. And Fjall Raven demonstrates this pretty clearly. See, while Gore-Tex hems and haws about which PFCs are worse, and Patagonia flip-flops about when PFCs are necessary, Fjall Raven takes a bit more of a straightforward approach. How about we just don't use them? Period. Their hard stance on chemicals goes beyond just PFCs, actually. The thing about a lot of the chemicals that we use in manufacturing today is that we don't really have much of an idea about how these substances are affecting us and our surroundings in the long run. It can take years and even decades for scientists to begin to have an understanding of what certain chemicals are doing, and then years after that for people to actually do something about it. You know, like that time that we sprayed uh, the pesticide DDT on everything, only for it to be banned decades later for its hazardous effects on the environment and human health. Of course, this was after it had killed so many birds of prey that bald eagles ended up on the endangered species list. America, right? But Fjall Raven has declared that they won't take these kinds of risks, that they're not going to wait for chemicals to be later discovered as super toxic. They instead claim to avoid basically everything that even has the potential to be harmful, which is a bit of a gray area that we kind of have to take their word for. But regardless of those nuances, they've come up with some pretty creative ways to accomplish this. First off, Fjall Raven doesn't buy into the idea that everything for the outdoors has to be so waterproof that you could stand under the Niagara Falls and come out dry. For many adventures, water resistance is plenty good, and it doesn't take chemically intensive modern technology to make a garment water resistant. I mean, people have been surviving in horrible weather since the dawn of time. I don't think we need astronaut level waterproofness to go on a hike. The cornerstone of Fjall Raven's weatherproofing is their in-house G1000 material, a breathable, weather-resistant, and durable blend of polyester and cotton that they use in their jackets and trousers and backpacks. This fabric is meant to be paired with Greenland wax, Fjall Raven's secret blend of paraffin wax and beeswax that is rubbed into G1000 material to further weatherproof it. I love it though. We have Gore-Tex who literally invented something called the Storm Cube, where they can 
recreate the most extreme weather conditions to make sure that their material stands up against anything. And then we got Fjallraven over in Sweden just rubbing beeswax into the same fabric they've been using since 1968. It may seem archaic, but it actually works. G1000 provides a durable, breathable base, and Greenland Wax adds some water repellency while also increasing the fabric's lifespan. While the wax does decrease breathability, it's super versatile. You can add the layers of wax as the weather gets worse, and you can wash it out for the summertime or just rub it into the key areas like your shoulders and your hood, leaving your torso and jacket light and breathable. Whatever suits your needs in a particular season or location, this combination is a really nice medium. But of course, I know there's a lot of people jump into the comments, we have to remember that water repellent is not the same as waterproof. Greenland wax can do a pretty good job of keeping you dry in almost all circumstances. But in some very extreme circumstances, you're going to need something a little bit more impenetrable. And this is where things get a little more sticky. If Fjallraven wanted to be PFC free and still be able to compete with other top brands, they'd have to invent their own Gore-Tex-like material. And that's exactly what they did. Fjallraven created EcoShell, a waterproof, breathable material made from recycled polyester that uses PFC-free durable water repellency treatment, or DWR. This is actually like really important, okay? We've mentioned in a previous video how Gore-Tex uses its fabric longevity as an excuse to continue making their products, right? The idea being that one extremely high quality, well-made jacket is going to last better and pollute less than 10 horribly made jackets that fall apart after a season. But that kind of skirts over the fact that to stay waterproof, these garments require customers to reapply DWR when the previous coat starts to wear out. And what's often in DWR, you may be asking? Anybody want to leisure a guess what nefarious thing could be in a liquid that's used to reinvigorate this chemical? Of course, yes, the answer is PFCs. So even if you take our excellent advice and get a great used Arc'teryx jacket to avoid making more PFC dependent garments, you end up having to spray PFCs on it every single time that it wears out. But Fjall Raven has invented their own DWR, which granted is by Fjall Raven's own admission less oil resistant and durable than DWRs which include PFCs, but they basically just decided that this small constellation was all right, given that it's not cancerous, forever chemicals, almost certainly going to outlive all of humankind. Now we do have to note, Fjall Raven is still dependent on PFCs for certain aspects of their product lines. Like for example, apparently it's just impossible to create a waterproof zipper without PFCs. I don't know the details of this because I don't know even how a zipper works normally, but they're hopefully going to be working towards a technology for the future. Just to say, they're not perfect, things change, maybe it'll get better in the future. But this brings me to something that we've talked about a lot, which is the outdoor clothing's absolute obsession with statistics. The newest jackets today are grams lighter, millimeters thinner, and pressure tested to make sure that you can get from your heated car to the mall without getting your cotton t-shirt wet. And this is the culture that Fjallraven seems to be fighting back against. As Fjallraven's head of sustainability put it, it's easy to add functionality because it's nice to have. But every function has a side effect, often an environmental one in the form of chemical release or production issues. We need to evaluate every function to determine if it is worth the environmental impact. Honestly, that doesn't sound like much, but it's actually amazing to hear an outdoor company talk like this. The outdoor industry has spent the last 40 years obsessively grinding to create technical marvels that will help the 0.001% of society accomplish the impossible, while the rest of us use it to walk our dog in the dog park in Vancouver. Yeah, but your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could, they didn't stop to think if they should. Fjall Raven is putting up a bet that consumers will start to realize that the gear that they need doesn't have to be moonproof if it just gets the job done. And they've proved that they can create fantastic, planet-friendly technical gear that performs at 80 to 90% of the ability of the stuff that's proven to give us cancer. But hands up, how many of us honestly need the best of the best? 
Now I know I'm not planning to go up Everest or to the North Pole anytime soon, and the G1000 would probably be more than sufficient for what I would use it for, and probably a heck of a lot better for the natural world too. So if you're in need of some new outdoor gear, I would just encourage you to think a little bit about what you are genuinely going to use it for and where you'll be wearing it. But listen, that's just our opinion. We hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure that you're subscribed. And if you are, then we will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.